Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere, and there's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon, so a massive shout out of appreciation to Abraham Mohammed, Adam, Adrian Quintana, Alistair Main, Blue Ridge Ranger, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Ch Chow Young Cat, Dank, Dave Rakia Gafford, David Robinson, David Wayne Foster, Daz Studio 68, Edwin Johnson, Erwin Jennisons, Felix Hung, Fireball X, God Rockin, Henrik 86, Joshua Balsimo, Kirsten Smith, Liam Nedrick, Life is Short, uh, Maria Nealands, I think you're a, a new one. I can't remember if I shouted you out once before for becoming a new Patreon, Maria, but uh, welcome. Thank you very much for being here. Matt. Missouri Bear, Nagara, Nathan Thompson, Nibai, Guitar Craig, Rene, Rob H, Sally Ballis, Silver Umbrella, Skeptic936, Texas Mike, The Real Gabster, Tina Baker, Tom Herkins, uh, Unbelievable Productions, and Windrider. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now we are joined by a few people in both Discord and G+, so I'll raise the mics on them and you can enjoy the dulcet tones while I set up for the first live show. Yes. And not much. We're not recording yet, so... Yeah, we are. Well, now we are. But <laughs> you just started though, right? Yeah, like literally just now. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Um, Good morning. <laughs> So we're we gonna have a little pre-show presentation. Are you gonna you're gonna put up your community post and read it off? Are you? I just want to go through some of the comments because um, the fucked mate they, they they don't get it yet, and the ones that do get it, they, they're gonna have to decide: do they accept that it's a belief and it's not prove proven, or do they accept that they need to find the proof themselves? But they can't contain their current position. Oh, it's proof, fact. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing I'd open with, I know you've literally had a brief opener from you before we started recording, but if they're utilising refraction, they're essentially saying the lines in which that are travelling to you aren't straight. Well, if you don't have straight lines, or to put it in their terminology, quote, we don't have a geometric horizon, then you can't do geometry. So... Prior to this, when they've been utilising refraction, it also broke the geometry. We just never spotted it. Whereas now that they've got a donkey dick for a tangent line, it's so much more obvious that they're not even doing geometry when they're bending the line. That's not how you do geometry. So, I know you're going to come on to this, but one of your commenters replied that we've always told you to use the refracted value. No, we should have always been responding that if you're bending the lines, you're not doing geometry anymore. Yeah, you're doing non-Euclidean geometry, otherwise known as fake geometry. To do spherical geometry, you still need to draw a straight line to the tangent point. You've still got to do that. I don't yeah, know what you're getting this. If you're not, if you're okay, not doing ahead. Euclidean geometry, though, and you're using curvy lines, then you're doing some other batshit crazy geometry. I'm going to get to your community post, then. Oh, I'll look for my... Oh, there it is. Which one yeah. Is. Okay, so screen share. Because we'll just be able to reference this in the in the in the main show. Okay, you see this, yeah? Yeah, it's on screen now. <clears throat> All right, this is um, domesticated primates meme. Now, some people um, think that they shouldn't have names on them or pictures or whatever. It's making a point. The story is. Whoever this lead character is, it can be anyone, whoever's in charge on their side. We need to get our act together. Do we or do we not have a horizon? Rumpus. Apparent. Brenda. Geometric. Idiot. Let's just say they've disproved the radius, and they obviously he gets kicked out the window. 
Now, the problem is they're still in a flurry over this because they're all, they haven't got the story straight for starters. And the story that we're getting from the bulk of them is that, well, you can see the geometric, you can't see the geometric horizon, but it is there. So I want to just focus on a couple of key people um, that make comments. So Ruhif, how many years have we been telling you idiots to go straight to the refracted hidden and ignore the geometric? So I said, you can see that you don't have a geometric. Welcome to Flat Earth. You need to be able to prove a geometric one exists, not just matches your model once in a while. Evidence, not calculation. Calculations are not reality. And he comes back to me and he says, there is a geometric horizon. It's what you would see if there was no atmosphere. Outside of that description, it's pretty much useless. Why do I need to prove a geometric horizon? Sounds like a straw man. Well, obviously, it's not a straw man. It's the imperi- It's it's everything that their model is based on. It is not a straw man. But I said, Ruth, Hold on. just before you, you respond, it, just before you respond, read his last statement again. Why do I need to prove a geometric horizon? Sounds to block like a straw things. Man. To block things in the distance, for boats to go over, to bend at altitude, to apply a hidden value. That's why you complete an utter moron. You've asserted that stuff's being hidden at a particular value. Well, what do you think it's being hidden by? Yep. So I said in response, Rue, if if you can't prove it, it doesn't exist like gravity. They need gravity in their model and they see things falling. They ignore helium balloons that rise. And they ignore the effect of the medium on the object in, in the medium. They ignore that effect. But it's like gravity. Unless you can prove that it's a thing, it's not a thing just because your model needs it. So basically, Ruif doesn't realize yet that just because he needs a geometric horizon doesn't mean he's actually got one. He's happy with the calculation. He ignores the need to have the evidence to support the calculation. Well, we want that evidence. And everybody that's on the ball earth side should also be asking, yeah, we, they've got a point there. Where is the evidence for the geometric horizon? Because if you haven't got evidence of a geometric horizon curve, then boats ain't going over it. We're seeing a refracted, or we're seeing a, a distorted, refracted, whatever description you want to use. We're seeing the horizon that does weird shit. But how do we prove it's geometric? Well, thankfully, we don't have to, but they do. So just calculating it, don't make it true. And Ruhif doesn't realize that yet. He still thinks that he can calculate it, therefore it's true. And we all need to point out to him that he's a moron. Um, a couple of other comments. Uh, let's see if I can see. Here we go. Sleeping Warrior. Hold on. You just ended the flat earth debate with your comment to Ruhif. You said, quote, if you can't prove it, it doesn't exist. You have never proven flat earth. You can't define flat earth. So therefore the flat earth doesn't exist. Now go to your room, shut down your channel and shut up. Okay. Just, before, is, you, what, just before we get on to you, this guy with his straw man red herring obfuscation. So if you haven't got a geometric horizon... You can't do geometry. Correct. They haven't, they've not worked it out yet. They still think that it exists and they can assume it. So it's gone from now assuming R to assuming geometric horizon. They've not realized that you need evidence for it. Ruif still thinks that it's there just because he can't see it. That's acceptable. And we're saying, no, we want to see proof that there's a geometric horizon. Measure it. Prove it. I mean, it's only over a mile. I mean, how hard can it be? You, sh you should see curve over a mile. So why can't it be measured? Where is the science that proves that, that standing water will drop? <sighs> anyway, uh, there's loads on here. There's, there's so many things to on here, but Ruif, sure, you're but just lying yourself to save an already dead religion. It's only, yep. by the looks of what I can see, it's only Ruif with the, the usual toe-in-the-line fundy response. But Ruif got involved in the Isle of Man debate and asserted that a physical geometric horizon was obscuring the bottom of the island. To a certain degree. Now, if the geometry could only be done if there was no atmosphere, and by their own omission, the light is being refracted to come up with refracted maths for that calculation, then all of their maths that you're saying he hangs his hat on still is bunk. Every single thing that they did for the Isle of Man calculations, all of it, null and void. You can't do geometry. If you haven't got a geometric horizon, you certainly can't assert that it's blocking stuff in the distance, especially if the stuff in the distance that you're claiming is supposed to be in a physical fixed position is refracted. You can't perform geometry in those circumstances. You haven't got straight lines anymore. So how are you going to assert you've got a straight line tangent to work out how much obstruction you've got from the physical horizon? You now deny, Ruhif! You complete moron!
Yep. I mean, tenth man. Let's let's go back to the panel while we're here. Let's go back to this picture, uh, this meme. Tenth, what do you think of the meme? Let me look at it. He's, he's asking why he has to prove a physical geometric horizon. Uh, to back your assertions you made about my cold lighthouse and the Isle of Man, because that was utilising a physical geometric horizon obstruction that you barked on about for ages, Ruhif. Why do you need to prove it's real to back the bullshit you've already claimed here? Because if it's not real, none of the claims you made in regards to the Isle of Man are correct anymore. And you can't claim they are because apparently it's all refracted light. So you can't do your geometry, moron. Why do you need a horizon to back your current bullshit? It's what you believe. It's your religion, you moron. I can't believe these idiots. I thought you had more intelligence than this, Ruhif. I thought you'd appreciate that if you haven't got any geometric horizons, you're not going to be doing geometry. And if you don't need to claim you've got a physical geometric earth curve edge, then none of your claims about there being a physical geometric earth curve edge blocking islands in the distance make any sense anymore. Now you get it, Ruhif, if you stupid dick. I think the cartoon is funny. Yeah. It shows exactly, this middle box shows exactly the, 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 the mess that they're in. They don't, they don't have the story straight. They don't have any physics for it. And this moron over here thinks that if, at best, you've disproved the radius as though that was some kind of like minor, like a minor like um, concession. No, if we disprove the radius, mate, your whole model fails. Hence why you've been kicked out the window by whoever this might be. Jeremy, I suppose. Looks a bit like Jeremy with them eyes. Well, you, well, can't, yeah, you, can't have, you can't have any physics or math for it because all along it's been a Jedi mind trick. It's not there. Correct. It's never been there. This is the whole trick they have now with the black swan and the videos and pictures from a one foot high elevation shows something that should be there is not there. Now they have to come to a realization that it's just been a trick, a Jedi mind trick. Yep. It's fictitious. It's all fictitious. Even the geographers call it fictitious. Yeah, we've gone through that. I mirrored that over the weekend. Uh, tenth man, so if you noticed, uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, it's all. I mean, they're going to wake up to the fact that uh, math doesn't apply to uh, this. Uh, how can I put it? Their model, because math doesn't work out their model. So if math doesn't work out their model, what's their model? Yeah, and a big shout out to the people on our side that now get it. Um, this, it's nice to see people pushing it. It's nice to see, for like, for example, Mitchell from Australia. He gets it. He's pushing it. It's great. Mark Sargent, he gets it. He's pushing it. It's great. And then you have the other people on our side that are not still behind it. And it's like, this is the strongest point I've seen in this topic. I don't get it. I'll just give it time. It's going to find its way to the top. All the other arguments about 2015 arguments or whatever are all on the wayside now. I like Nathan's uh, point they just made. I hope I don't screw it up. But how can you measure a refracted uh, horizon if you don't even have the geometric one? <laughs> yeah, the geometric one is based on the R value, and so is the refraction that they're going to be applying. But in order to do that refracted value and assert the physicality of the horizon that's causing the obstruction, they need to be doing straight line geometry, and they're claiming to have bent lines. So their geometry is completely bunk. They don't have an R value anymore because they don't have a geometric horizon anymore. Up until now, it was always assumed that they had the geometric horizon they necessitated for their model. And we assumed it along with them. Well, not anymore. Now they're telling us we don't have a geometric horizon. Why would we need one, Ruhif? Well, to back the claims that it's blocking the Isle of Man that you made quite extensively. That would be the geometric physical obstruction that you drew straight lines to whilst claiming the light was bending. Your whole geometry's bunk. It would also support the claim that boats go over a horizon. It would also support the claim that we live on a sphere. I mean, it is the paramount point. It is the big point that everybody gets told by popular science that we live on a sphere because of the horizon. It's supposed to be the leading edge of a sphere. It's clearly not, is it? It's optical. So we still need evidence of that geometric curve or that curvature from any perspective. We still need, still need to see it. It ties into question one on housekeeping. Any evidence of curvature? Absolutely none just assumed in maths maths that doesn't work anymore 
because the geometric assumption had limitations to the physicality the sphere would have to be if you were standing on a sphere. And those geometric limitations have now been breached. The R value has been debunked. You can no longer trust it. Ah, fundies, you don't have it anymore. It's been debunked by the black swan. Well, the R value is the very tenant of your religion that you need to hang everything on. So saying, oh, well, do I need a geometric horizon? Well, because you need it to block stuff. You need boats to go over it. You need to curve it at altitude to claim that Earth's spherical. That's why it's your religion. That's why you need a geometric horizon, you bunch of morons. Uh, uh, why are they using uh, what? Uh, what is that called? Uh, Euclidean three space when they should be using pseudo Romanian four space anyway. Uh, because it's pseudo, not as in not no, actual. I mean, they've been doing all their geometric calculations with uh, Euclidean three space. That, that they were trying to prove something that they didn't believe anyway. Well, that might be the case. It doesn't alter the argument and how it wins, which is to say that they're asserting geometry and physicality. And now they're relinquishing. More is it they're relinquishing? Oh, yeah, geometry and physicality. The premise of their religion. That's where we win. They no longer can assert physical geometry in the shape of a sphere. Game over. Oh, I agree. I agree. It just seems to me that they're they're behind in their their arguments that they're still arguing. <sighs> yeah, and they're going to remain that way for eighteen months. Some of them, twelve months for for others. And that's just people on our side. I don't know. I think I don't know about our side. Our side. I've tried to not analyze it in that way. Everybody's their own individual. People who come here, yeah, they're enlightened to this argument. The people who go to you, or Quantum Eraser or Red Pill, yeah, they're enlightened to the argument. Spurs, you go to Spurs, I'll listen to him today. You're going to be in line to the argument. As for everyone else, who cares? Let them be. Yeah, you can't control everybody. Just the argument's strong enough. Uh, it's going to force people to address it. And when they address it, they have to either believe in math and that you can measure, or they're going to have to give it up. If you're going to give it up, then you can't measure anything. Take their assumption of R, for example. When we started talking about in R they trust, and they've only got an assumption of R, and we started digging out Geo Streber saying they assume R, and Rumper saying he's assuming R to you, things like that seemed very, very important, and that we must permeate that through the community so they all understand that it's just based on an assumption. It's not based in anything tangible, just assumption. Well, now I hear other channels talking about it like it's, like it's nothing. In other words, it's completely permeated the community. Everybody now knows that they're just assuming R. Now we've demolished R and debunked R, that'll make its way through as well. Yeah, it'd be nice if everybody around us that was supposed to be cheering the same tune we're cheering, well, that would be great if they cheered this tune quicker because it's a devastating tune. But so what? <laughs> I'm still happy to chop people's heads off with this devastating tune. And if people notice, then great. If they don't, they don't. Shout out to Liverpool. Th uh, three points closer to winning the Premier League. First time in 30 years. Woo! Yeah. You know that. Yeah, their uh, mathematical ideas have no counterpart to the real world because of the black swan correct yeah any semblance yeah. of a connection correct any semblance of a connection between the model and reality is now gone and they say it themselves now in the face of having to require a necessity for a geometric physical obstruction in the form of the isle of man observations and how it was asserted that this line was a physical geometric obstruction that they drew straight lines to to tell us just how much was obscuring things in the distance. Now we have them telling us, or asking us, Why would I need a geometric horizon, Ruhif? Yeah, you've been on the show, mate, arguing about this horizon! And how much it obscures stuff! Why'd you need one? 
because you're a blatant liar or a complete fraud based on every assertion you've ever made here if you now relinquish that claim. You utter moron. It makes me so angry how stupid they are. Your stupidity annoys me, Ruhif. It annoys me how thick you are. Why would you need one? You've claimed it for three years. Here! That's why you need one. Because you become a fraud without it. You moron. Fraud. Liar. Yeah? So what, you were asserting that we didn't need a physical horizon when you were here talking about Isle of Man? Yeah, you needed it then, didn't you? But now you don't. Yeah, you still need it to stop yourself being a fraud. He won't, he won't be a fraud anymore if he admits his mistake, however. But he won't do that. <clears throat> no, he's got the same bullshit idea that he can wave his hand like a Jedi and say, we don't need a geometric horizon. Yeah, the Jedi mind trick doesn't work on us, you stupid buffoon. Yeah, we realise that you absolutely require it. It's the premise of your religion. So waving your hand and saying you don't require it doesn't work, moron. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Ruhif, directly to you. I know you watch, and you're a moron. Why do you need a physical obstruction for your geometric physical obstruction model? Well, because you've got a physical geometric obstruction model that you've come here and claimed. That's why you need it, you dipshit. Enjoy the aftertaste, Ruhif. I hear it lasts a while. It's no different to when you've got this assumption that gravity exists and then you calculate from them ba that basis that gravity exists for things like weight. Because weight requires mass and little g. Well, if little g is not a force and then you're calculating for weight, but weight doesn't have a force, it means that that mass is void. Pseudo maths is not actually based on real world. So your maths fails because you haven't got mass, you haven't got little g anymore. So then you haven't got weight, so then you haven't got atmospheric pressure, and then you don't have an explanation for why gas doesn't burst into the vacuum of space anymore. Your whole argument, virtually all topics to do with space, revolve around gravity. That's the importance of the argument, because if you haven't got gravity being a force, you guys are knackered. Well, it goes worse now. You haven't got the horizon. That's another hate. That's another dirty word now, isn't it? You're not going to be able to use the word horizon anymore, because we'll just say... Which horizon's that then? Then you're going to say the apparent horizon, obviously, and then we're going to say, oh, not the real geometric one then, no. And then you're going to have to be forced into saying, no, we just assume it and believe it, and we just laugh at you. So it is a belief. They're always begging the question, Anthony. They, they beg the question and start from a conclusion, but they haven't even proven. If you write... Yeah. So they say the Earth is physical, but it's not mathematical object. That's what they're saying, right? Good morning, guys. Hey, hey chocolate. chocolate. Oh, chocolate! You've just missed it. Have you seen my community post on my channel? Uh, the one with the cartoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some of the comments yeah, yeah, in there. Like that. Some of the comments yeah, in there make them all of them not up to speed. <laughs> I like the cartoon. That was excellent. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it fits. Like, so badly. Like, look at this guy. What? At best, we've disproved the radius. Throw him out the window. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you admit such a stupid thing, you idiot? <laughs> How do you, how do you totally not follow trivial. the protocol and say things like we have, we don't see the geometric horizon or we have three horizons? No, he, he just goes and says that we disprove the radius, throw him out the window. <laughs> yeah, didn't he go to the Jedi hand wave training session? Nope, I think he missed it. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Sensible, have a word with a chap called Ruhif. He's been on the seminar. He knows how to use the Jedi hand wave. Having been here declaring just how much physical geometric obstruction when they draw straight lines to the physical geometry that they claim is an earth curve edge, Ruhif has declared that this is a physical obstruction obscuring the north end of the Isle of Man. Then, only yesterday, he asks Antony why he would require a physical geometric horizon. Oh, he did it. Did he? He, he waved his <laughs> he hand did. and said... Why would we need a geometric horizon? 
like he's never made a claim using the geometry of Earth and claiming Earth curve obstruction based on the physical geometry of the horizon. No, he's never done... Oh, yeah, he has. He spent about 25 shows here, minimum, doing exactly that with his physical geometry and his obstruction at the horizon based on the geometry he assumes with an R value we've debunked with the black swan. So now he has to wave his hand and go, we don't need a geometric horizon. Yeah, yeah, you, what you need is a good slap around the face because you've asserted it here at nausea. Idiots, that's what you are. Your hand wave doesn't work. Your Jedi mind trick's useless. You absolutely require a geometric horizon. It's the basis of your religion. Without the geometric horizon, do they just have the flying pizza dough in space pretty much now? I don't know what they claim. I don't care. What I know is we don't have a physical geometric sphere edge for a horizon. It's required. It's in the model marked with an X and labelled horizon. And they will draw straight lines to that assumed physical location they don't have anymore to tell us just how much the obstruction they apparently don't need, according to people like Ruhif, is obstructing things. But they don't need it. It's not required. Why would they need one? Well, it's, it's arbitrary, Nathan. He really asked, why would we need a physical horizon? Do you want to read his comment again, Anthony? Yeah, please do. I missed it. Yeah, one sec. Nathan, do you want to tell us about the Red's rhetoric video? Because he's been welcome to Flat Earth now as well, right? Yeah, Hell, Hell and Degenerates made a video where he's asking a question, specifically asking, what could it be that's blocking these buildings in the distance? Could it be the geometric physicality of the earth and then I play a load of quotes from the fundies at ground level in the trenches who tell us it's not that they don't need a geometric horizon that we haven't got a geometric horizon that it'd be the horizon we saw if we suck all the atmosphere out but obviously we've got refraction that's what we're told here so I hope that answers Red Rhetoric's question no it's definitely not the physical geometry of an earth curve no 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 try to keep up to date with the flat earth debate Red Rhetoric all of your fellow fundies are relinquishing the physical geometry you're asking about, my friend. So the answer's no, Reds. It's not physical geometry that's obscuring those buildings. No. I'll wave my hand. Why would you need a geometric earth curve edge to make such an assertion? Oh, you would, would you? I will tell that to the fundies who tell us you don't have one anymore. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live and there's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by Chocolate Sane, Paul Hall, Cho uh, Sleeping Warrior and Righteous Force along with 10th man in G+, and a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome, one and all. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, hello. Here we are. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Any signs of a physical geometric earth curve edge? The boats are meant to go over? Uh, supposed no. To bend at altitude, block the Isle of Man, all that kind of stuff. No? Anybody? Mm, no. Let me guess. We don't need a geometric horizon. No? 
That's the response I've been getting. They just assume it's there, calculate for it as though it's there, and tell everybody there is one. No evidence of one, though, right? So there are a lot of signs hey, I mean, of denial of the geometric horizon. Like, we don't see it. We've never seen it. Um, it doesn't exist. Why would we need it? I mean, these are all the nonsensical things we're hearing now. And it's like, what, what's going on, guys? Because a few months ago, a couple of months ago, that's what boats were going over. It's a little weird. Very strange. You'd think they'd want to back their claim that we're on a sphere with physical sphere attributes by showing us some of those sphere attributes rather than telling us that they don't exist, they aren't required, and the physicality that would be offered by a sphere-shaped rock flying through a sky vacuum isn't attainable. But they'll assume it anyway and just propose that we've got two horizons. The imaginary one they've based their entire religion on that would dictate physicality we don't have and the one we see sod all to do with the physical sphere Earth. Wonderful religion you guys have got. Very tenable. Oh, my bad. I'm in that violin. Woo, woo, woo. I'm in that world where backwards reality exists and the model's still tenable. It isn't. We've debunked R with the black swan. You no longer have an R value. We'll still ask for it, just in case somebody assumes that they can insert it with a presupposition. Any evidence of the R value, by the way? Anybody at all? Nah, it's been, it's been disproven at best. At best. Yeah. Nathan, at does best. it count if we can find R in the maths? That just shows you can put things in maths. <laughs> Abstractions. Who cares? We're talking about physics. The world we oh. live in is real. Um, mathematical abstraction isn't really going to cut it. Oh, no. I wonder, I wonder if math, Mr. Math is reality is okay with knowing that the very math that he requires for his model disproves the very math that his model <laughs> has. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Any signs of any Earth curve whatsoever? Not, no. from, not from their model anymore. What model? That's the only model. place that it was. Now they've given that up. I'm pretty yeah. sure the geometrical orientation of the Earth's surface is flat, straight, and level. Any signs that it's moving? Axial rotation yeah. of the Earth-based variety? Any evidence of that? Uh. Don't all answer at once, guys. Gee. But you have to really think about it hard. Like, is there really any sign at all? No, it's just, it's really even tough for me now to even try to imagine what it would really be like. I wonder if any baller has even really thought about it uh, too hard. I'm, I'm hearing in the loss of the geometric horizon, the, uh, the, the reverse toilet flush has, has come back into vogue. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Coriolis. <laughs> a bullshit Coriolis assertion, eh? Yep. I see. These things do the rounds. I'm sure someone will come in and assert it. What about scientific Next one, they think of one. Any scientific well, evidence? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's dwell a little bit. I mean, I'm looking out my window here, and uh, I don't see the Earth moving, uh, but they're telling me it is. Oh, I'm looking out from the seashore, and uh, from a one-foot elevation, I'm supposed to see the geometric horizon. They tell me it's there, but I don't see it. What's all this sound like, folks? Sounds like a cult. Yeah. You, you forgot to climb the tree. That, that's the key right there. <laughs> climb the tree, that proves. Yeah, <laughs> but if I... If I do that, chocolate, I'd be going into another pseudo branch of science. No, no. If if it was a sphere, if you assume Earth is spherical and you raise an altitude, then based on geometry, putting the mathematics of what's occurring into side elevation and basing the tangent line you draw to the physical sphere edge obstruction being a straight line, which of course they don't have if there's any refraction, nevertheless, your apparent geometric horizon with all those assumptions in place that you're seeing the side of your own head, etc., etc., would be to say that its apparent nature is based on your height or your altitude. But that's based on side-on geometry, reifications and ignoring perspective. 
But nevertheless, their horizon that they reified from that side on geometric model that excludes perspective was to say that their physical horizon was apparent based on height. But for some reason, we have fundies who insert the word apparent like it gives them a second horizon. Like we've got a geometric horizon and an apparent horizon when it's redundant. The geometric horizon in their fundamentalist religious belief is also apparent based on your altitude. That's why it moves when you move your slider up and down in your side-on model when you can see the side of your own head and you're comparing it to pictures like the one on screen where you don't see the side of your own head and you do have perspective. But nevertheless, they'll assume there are value giving them a physical geometric horizon which isn't in this picture or any picture because we don't have one. With a hand wave, we're simultaneously told that it both blocks things in the distance and isn't in existence at all. Amazing. The globe is just so untenable, it's untrue. Yeah, before before we let them climb any tree, they got to prove geometry because I can't trust them with on the branch doing trigonometry. Hmm. Are we done with housekeeping yet? Or? Not at all. Any scientific evidence it, of gravity? Oh. Eh. That was a good pun. Anybody? Any scientific good evidence morning. of gravity? No. No? No, no signs of an effect that is the side effect of a conceptual medium. That's nope. what I was waiting for. Right, so no no assertions of bending conceptual space-time. Okay, moving on. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? Nope. Can't do any manipulations to prove cause and effect relationships. Just observations only. That's not science. It's part of science, but it's not science. Oh, don't forget the declaration part. Observe and declare. Yeah, they've got step one, observe. Beyond that, they can't do anything scientific, so they just make up a story. Observe and declare. Coined by, what's that dude's name, the black guy that used to come on? Didn't believe in anything, didn't have beliefs. What's his name? Oh, James. Slick. 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 Yeah. Slick James Johnson. Big shout out to Slick James Johnson. Yeah. Observe and declare. When any evidence of it? You don't have any beliefs. Are you claiming you know everything you know? Look, man, we're not here to critique him. We're just here to give him props for saying observe and declare, man. Don't give the guy grief. He's not even here. <laughs> I haven't seen him around for a long time. I've seen him around. Yeah, Slick's still doing his thing. He's still a flat earther. Once you're flat, you can't go back. Right on. Any Anyone of... that regresses back to where, being a Where would you go type? back to? You don't have a geometric horizon. Where, where do you yeah. go back to? Yeah. What are you going to hang <laughs> your hat on? Back to imagination land. You just bypass <laughs> all that those facts, you know, and then go back to imagination land. Well, you're going to be broken. But... You're going to be broken. So if you've watched... We don't often discuss this part of 1984, but... At the end, after he's been tortured and taught that whatever it is, 2 plus 2 is 5, well, at that point, and he accepts the situation he's in. In other words, he appreciates that no matter how much he fights, no matter how much he struggles, he's, he's got to accept the tyranny. Now, to a certain extent, we're in that position. If we were still globe heads, in other words, we'd be, in, we'd be broken and in a lot of cognitive pain. That's why we say it, right? Share your pain. Because you're Winston at the end of 1984 when you come to this reality. You can't deny what we're putting down. There's, you know, you can you can rebel against it. You can rage against it. But it doesn't change that if you've got an ounce of common sense or you can follow any degree of logic, you're going to appreciate what's being said here and understand it. And if you still deny it, it's going to leave you in cognitive pain. And the only thing you can brace against is all of the other people around you who are ignorant of what you now know. Now, they're not in cognitive pain. They're blissfully ignorant. But the people who come here, they're definitely not in that position. <laughs> so they're in cognitive pain. It's not your Winston. Like I say, at the end of that, that's what you are, the, the globe heads. Me, I'm free of it all. And everyone else on this panel. You know, we don't have to concern ourselves with squaring circles that can't be squared. You do, though. And you're still doing it to the point where you deny the very religion you hang your hat on to get around an awkward argument that we've put forward, which is comical, <laughs> and we like it. It's quiet as a result while you all suffer your pain. 
And we're all cheery and high spirits, other than highlighting the stupidity and Id- idiocy of people like Ruhif. But other than those minor moments, generally pretty quiet here, which is nice, I like it. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? That's just assumed as well. That's just a story. I, I, think, that, I think that's less tenable than their geometric horizon that's never existed, never seen, never been measured. Yeah, I'm going to say like it's a, a molten iron cube. How could anybody prove right or wrong? Just make it up, and just as long as you can write it I down and get it published. I'm, I'm going to say it's a molten chocolate ball. <laughs> there you go. Disprove me. <laughs> yeah. Chocolate balls? Or? No, it's not satisfactory. You've got to come up with a whole bullshit story like the one they've got about Thea. So long as you can make up a story to justify the oversized molten iron core because a rock smashed into the fledgling earth and a glancing blow didn't destroy the planet and all the debris coalesces into earth and then you have your oversized molten iron core. So that's a story. Now, without the backup of a story, in other words, some nonsense to go around with the assertion that we've got a chocolate core, no one's going to believe you. But if you can drag out the assertion that we've got a chocolate core with the story about Willy Wonka and his experiment that went wrong... And how that chocolate waterfall goes directly to the centre of the earth. That's why it's full of chocolate. When you can pad the story, people will believe you chocolate. Now, I did that very ad hoc, and I think you'll find that was very convincing. People can are already imagining that chocolate fountain or that chocolate pipe that Augustus got stuck in. They're picturing that going to the core right now because I've put that there. That's all you need. Just so story. <laughs> this is great. Yep. Love it. Uh, makes me think about those ribbons. Makes you think about what? Say that again, whoever it was in Discord. John. Chocolate causing gravity. Chocolate could yeah. cause gravity. I could pad the story to make that work. <laughs> We're not going to know. Yep. I think, I think Paul was trying to give a shout out to those pioneer gas particles. Oh, decided right. we're not going to we're not going to act like gas. We're gonna rebel against it. Fuck entropy. <laughs> Go on, Paul, we're try just again. Gonna stay right here. Oh dear. Well with that impact chocolate, they had to overcome that as well. That massive impact, they decided to rebel against that too. Not not deal with it. That's possibly the worst your line has ever been. But I still managed to hear what you were saying, surprisingly. <laughs> Love it. Any evidence that you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container? And then the housekeeping's done. That's the last question. Yeah, Fight the Flat Earth's got a claim on that. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it's something to do with a vacuum chamber. I'm not... It's something to do with a nuclear reactor or something. I've heard snippets of it, but I'm not sure exactly what it is, but... I'd love to know where he gets his info from for that, the citation for it. If anybody knows where it is, let us know. Uh, I heard chamber? I heard chamber? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, chamber, that's a little yeah. weird. <laughs> That'd be a uh, container, right? <laughs> yeah. But within the container, <laughs> yeah. get, get this, what, the, what their argument to boil it down is, within the container, we can create gas pressure without a container. That's their argument. Really? Ah... Yes, great. Cognitive distance. It doesn't work, but it's great. Cognitive distance fixes everything. You're not listening. Right. I I need to be on camera, don't I, to wave my hand when I say the within the container. I need to say that faster. Within the container. You can have gas pressure without a container. Does that work? Was that subtle? Did it work? It's a bit like Rumpus where he gets the dirty sentence out straight away. Well, or, or he mumbles it with a completely open line. Mumble, mumble, horizon, mumble, mumble. <laughs> mumble, mumble, mumble. <laughs> mumble, mumble, horizon, yes, yes, mumble, mumble. I can't hear you. Nobody's saying anything. <laughs> it's just you mumbling the word we horizon. Do, do. <laughs> I love it. Happy days. <laughs> Indeed. That's an old assertion, though. That's been a good couple of years old, the, the whole... I don't know what the machine's called, but I know what you're talking about when they say they're creating a field inside with magnetic waves that's creating gas pressure in a ball inside the container inside the field. I still need a container as we started out. But that's but what it they're doesn't, asserting. though. 
It doesn't, though, because the only thing it's then sort of containing is plasma, not actually gas. Remember? So what? Still a container. Yeah, but it's not gas pressure. It's, right, it's plasma. plasma. Plasma is a gas. Mm, it's an electrified gas, but um, gravity has to go out from the center, then it's got to go back to the center, and it's also got to contain, so it's got to do like three functions. I've never seen a force do all of that, like be bi-directional like that, and also kind of be static and contain. It's kind of like amazing. impossible. It's amazing. Especially a force that's not a force. That's yeah. Awesome. Amazing, all of that. You can't even imagine a force doing that. But imagine something that's not even a force doing it. It's incredible. It's sort of mm -hmm. like they need it for their cosmology. It's no longer just a scientific... It's not even scientific, really. It's not even experimental. It's just a cosmological, mythical force. Yeah, like unicorn yeah, farts. Or dragon tears. And plus, it's, it's, it's supposed to be it's universal, yet it's not universally room. expressed. We don't see gravity forming balls or orbits here in our everyday lives. They have to point to space and assume that that's what's going on up there. But it's really an assumption. Indeed. What were you saying, Owen? Uh, what? I forgot. It has something. Oh, yeah, right. Uh... Gravity, it's just a a dip in the in the plane of the 4D realm, as it were. You know? It's just that's the holes. The holes and there the matter gathers, and that is that has as a side effect what we would understand as gravity. So it's not mass being attracted by mass, it's just these holes in 4D space that cause mat matter to gather. That has nothing to do with the mass in itself, even so. Yeah, just, that's what Einstein you know, defines it as. Right. The bending of space-time caused by the uneven distribution of mass, to be most concise. Yeah, you missed the, you missed the important but bit, space though. has properties. That's kind of... You missed the important bit, of negating of Oh, I'm being corrected from the sidelines by Quantum Eraser. Just read out his comment. Plasma is a fourth state of matter. Yes, it's ionised gas, but it's not a gas in the context of gas. Pressure. So, correction from Quantum Eraser. My bad. I told you. <laughs> yeah, you did. Shut up, Arwin. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Silence, Legolas. <laughs> Nathan, I, I just feel the need to correct you on your definition of uh, gravity as well. You missed Maybe. out the most important bit. You What's got that? the bit. The bit you said was the curvature of space-time caused by the uneven distribution of mass. That is correct, but it's incomplete. You need to put right at the beginning the effect of the curvature of space-time caused by the uneven distribution of mass. Because if you describe it as the effect of the curvature of space-time, it can't be misrepresented then as a cause by calling it a force, because that would make it a cause, but it's expressly defined as a consequence of, or an effect of, but not a cause of. So just make sure you get that word in there. So the bending of space-time is the effect caused by the uneven distribution of mass? Correct. Okay. I, I, I thought that's inferred, well, but obviously I know the level of people we're dealing with, so if I just infer... It, 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 I... it, is, it is inferred, but if you say it expressly, it stops them from saying it's a force. No, I get it. Because then they've got to start arguing, well, it, it manifests itself as a force. No, it doesn't. It's an effect. Hold on. <laughs> I totally get it. I, it doesn't make any sense, though. How does the uneven in di distribution of mass cause the specific type of setups that have been created, the holes in space... That's like a, a circular reasoning on the spot. Uh, who cares? It's, who cares? It's exactly. Who it's cares? The thing that we say causes it. So okay. Yeah, Arwin, Arwin. Let me just answer Arwin. you, Arwin, let me just, let me just answer you, Anthony. With so by comparison, Arwin, if I explain that there's time dilation issues in Narnia and that could cause issues with the gas lamp, yeah, does that matter? Yeah. Does it? So we need. Does that mean that the gas lamp won't be like lit in the movies anymore? Because there's a an issue with the physics based on the time dilation and the the gas and its exothermic reaction. You know, it doesn't matter. It's just a lamp in a story. 
No, it will matter because the creators and the writers will get a lot of angry tweets then. Right. So we're, we're those angry. We're those angry. Right. The, we're the people that are right to reply, pen in hand, going, "Dear Mister Narnia, movie maker, the lamp's got an issue," and we're saying, "Dear Einstein, you bonehead, <laughs> how can you bend the concept?" Right. But. It's just that cool. if really the, the uneven distribution of mass causes the supposed bending of space kind of causing the gravity, that's literally within the conceptual medium. So even within the suspense of disbelief using a conceptual medium, even within that, it is circular reasoning. I, I never noticed that before. Have, have you ever so listened to an explanation? Like... Have you ever listened to an explanation for how the TARDIS works? It's, Doctor Who. This is timey, wimey, wobbly, whatever. If you ever listen to an explanation of how the TARDIS works, it's, a, it's just a long string of contradictions and doublespeak. Makes no sense. And that's the whole point. It's just a bullshit story. Will it still travel with the wibbly wobbly stuff around it when it goes through a different to a different time and place? Yes, it will. Just like the phone booth in Bill and Ted will just go through the timelines when they dial a number on it. Does it make sense? No. Or does it need to? No. <laughs> Einsteinian pseudo Romanian force base doesn't require making any sense it's pseudo not real not actual based on what you think and read and conceptualize that's it right. it doesn't matter it doesn't have to make sense it's well, just bullshit well, that's, well, that's, hold on. Because, I have to that's because none of those stories make sense everybody knows the real story is doc brown fell off his toilet created the flux capacitor and that's how we time travel thank you <laughs> Exactly. But I still have a rebuttal to that, though, and that is, for example, when you play a video game, you know that video game does not pre represent reality in the slightest. It's basically a mechanical structure with options you can choose, and then it overlays a atmosphere onto it, as in a pictures and sounds, and that makes the experience. But look, if there's just glaring contradictions, like the game is broken, because the text has not been written correctly. Yeah, people are going to... What is this? It's just... No, it's a that's broken wrong. Game. It's shit. No. When you're running a computer game, it must work within the bounds of logic that the computer dictates. Now, if it doesn't work, it will just not work. It's a right. kind of on or off thing. Now, by not that's work, right. that could manifest itself in a particular area of the game as a glitch. But ultimately, work, ultimately it will function correctly if it's logical. And if it's not, it won't. Well, that's no different to the just so story they provide us but the only mechanism that's processing that logic is us not a computer so yeah, if we such a thing as i'm nearly there logical standards though i'm nearly you know? there and a conceptual meeting falls under philosophy and even within that philosophy they use brokenness it's just it's broken no matter what but there's no manifestation beyond the screen with the computer so if it doesn't function properly it doesn't manifest on the screen correctly. Well, there is no screen beyond our own conceptualization in this instance when you're talking about pseudo Romanian force space. It doesn't have to manifest on a screen. It only has to manifest itself into existence at a conceptual level in your mind. Same goes for the globe. It doesn't have to physically exist. It only has to exist in the construct of logic where the thing's being processed. And where's that? In your head. And the audience, you listening to me now, you're creating the globe if you live on it as a mental exercise. Now, you may not, just, you may think you're at a conscious level, um, you have the ability to choose what you conceptualize, and to a certain degree, that's correct. But we've been brainwashed, been led to believe, led to reify, led to conceptualize. Now, when you dissect as we are doing here einsteinian conce concepts you can see where the logic fails now all that does in terms of the logical processing that by analogy the computer would be making is deliver a glitch well the glitch is just going well that doesn't work that doesn't make any sense well all it means is that that particular piece of program doesn't manifest itself when we process it if we're the computer. So we just go, <laughs> gravity doesn't exist. It's not real. Now, at a conceptual level, the people who come here will argue that it is real because they want to reify it into existence. Now, half the time, they don't even realize they're doing that. 
But the making sense bit only matters if the person playing the video game, by analogy, cares that in one corner of the map, there's a, a boar that doesn't, doesn't spawn properly and has got fangs instead of teeth or whatever. If the player doesn't look at that corner, it doesn't matter. They're still immersed. The screen's still producing the information that it needs to immerse the player. Well, so long as we're immersed in the idea that we've got a bending concept called space-time, then it works. Then space is real at a conceptual level for us. And real at a conceptual level, by that I mean it's real in the eye of the person beholding the information. Now, the information's totally bunk. It doesn't work logically. Now, that just means it won't work for us. We're not going to believe gravity's real. That's all it means. Like the computer wouldn't render that particular aspect on the screen. All right. I'm not I'm not denying any of what you said. I was just saying that in basically the thinking traditions, philosophy, any kind of reasoning, a, a child, one of the first things when a, a child learns, learns about reasoning is about circular reasoning and how it's never correct. So even if you would approach this conceptual medium as a philosophical game, bypassing that it was officially meant to fool the dumb public okay bypassing that just as a construct it has circular reasoning in it which completely throws it all out of the door in any way it's absurd that that's there like in that way that that's this that's that's the answer they give it's absolutely absurd yep therefore never capable of being processed in your processor i.e., your head Right. Yeah, I didn't know it was broken to that degree. <laughs> well, we're just we're talking philosophy. We're talking about how people perceive the world as opposed to how the world actually is. That's the realm of physics. Philosophy is the conceptualization of it, the thinking about it. And us thinking about how it might come to pass is to conceptualize with the understanding that we're in that place. Now, of a few recent shows we've been doing the violin music so the people understand that when we take that step from we understand what our reality is we understand that one aspect of the reality we're faced with is a flat one now beyond that we're actually pretty ignorant here and i'm sure we'll all agree with that now it doesn't mean we we haven't got a great understanding of what the world isn't based on what they tell us to conceptualize and reify now we're just we're just not taking that next step we just don't reify it into our actual existence when we talk about you, for instance, Arwen, if you talk about the globe of the heavens, we can talk about it in those terms. And it means that we can understand a little bit better about how they might perform their cycles. But when you start expanding upon that, taking it outside of the boundaries of the concept that you've constructed to understand a pattern, that's when you reify it into physicality. You say, well, no, it's in this area called space and the medium of space time. And the reason they're formed is because of those concepts I've just devised. Well, you're working well outside of the realms of the concept that's only been utilised in the first instance to give you a better idea of how a pattern works. That's all it is. Yeah, you got a point. I wasn't even attempting to try to reify it to reality. It's just... Here's know. a question for you. How about this? How about the people who came up with, for example... The heliocentric model. Let's not give them names because they've been engineered into the bullshit narrative. But let's just say whoever it was that originally came up with this way of visualizing what's happening around them, a way of conceptualizing it. And they understood implicitly that it was just a conceptualization. Could it be the case that that was put across, or put out there into general distribution, the general populace gets the information? And just by default, we, the processors, the computers by analogy, Narwin's example, just start processing that stuff of our own volition into reality. In other words, there's no grand conspiracy. There's just many different philosophies, and the most prevalent one has been reified by the people. There is no person out there at the top that's saying, ha ha ha, I'll convince them all it's a globe. The people have just looked at this particular philosophy and gone, I like that. And then it's passed its way, father to son, and people have just reified it along the way. So there's no person to rebel against beyond our own cognition. We just have to break free of our own in, in, inability to see what is being reified beyond what is actually real. Wow, that's a pretty good point, actually. 
I've thought it yeah. for ages. I've just never been able to verbalise it in a nice way. So for, for a number of years, I've thought, who is the they? Who are we bracing against? And then you... you I do it anyway. I sort of... Um, what's the word? Not fantasise. There's another word. I can't remember it. Role play, I think the word is. But you kind of visualise a scenario where you're dealing with somebody like George Bush or Tony Blair or whoever. And you sit down with them at the dinner table and you start talking about this subject. And before long, you very... Oh, this is how it goes for me when I visualise it. You very quickly appreciate that they're no different to anybody else that you've ever talked about the subject. And they have no clue that they're in a position where they're reifying a conceptual model into existence. Now, I'm not going to deny that there's going to be people at the, the levels of NASA that absolutely know the lie and have seen a little cash cow in it or whatever they justify. I'm not going to divine their thoughts. But there are liars that you can definitely point out and single out and go, no, they're definitely lying. That, you know, They know they're not in a second law of thermodynamics violation sky vacuum. They know, they know they're on higher wire. You know, They're not going to be under any delusion that they're not faking what they're faking when they're faking it. You know, that's beyond comprehension. Anyway, the people that are at the, the actual point of power, where they have some degree of authoritarian control over us, I bet if you actually sat down with them and spoke to them about this deception, they wouldn't have a clue. They wouldn't know. And because it's part of the, the lexicon, the vernacular, the language, the diction that we all use, we're going to perpetuate the idea of sphericity and heliocentrism just in our general language. And it gets worse with time. So where you can easily look at somebody who's making a speech about global whatever and say, ah, look, he's perpetuating the lie. They're totally clueless. There's no intent to deceive. It's just part of their lexicon for describing their worldview. So it is of my humble opinion that it may be the case that while the paradigm changes, it's just a... Um, how does Mark Sargent describe it when it's like the the... the the great think of everybody all at once. I can't remember how he describes it, but it's got a quite cool way of describing it. Anyway, when when that sort of group mentality gets to the point where everybody's of the recognition that it's definitely not the model we've been reifying up until now, and we've only got ourselves to blame when we looked into it and we've done this, it seems that they've made it pretty plain, certainly with the horizon of recent debate, that it's just a concept to begin with when they talk about this geometric horizon. It's a, a thought experiment. And when they're telling us that it doesn't exist, they're kind of almost half admitting it to themselves that they know it's a thought experiment, despite the fact they're going to tell us just how much it's blocking things and how much that contradicts itself. So given that people are, you know, I don't think Ruhif got a, an earful from me on the pre-show. I don't think for a second that Ruhif is like some, some evil demon out to perpetuate the lies of heliocentrism by virtue of a master telling him to. In other words, I don't think this idea of shills is at all tenable either. I think that people do it of their own own accord. Now, it might be proven wrong. It might be that Rumpus turns out to be MI6 and he's absolutely tasked with keeping the heliocentric lie alive. And he drives off in his Aston Martin each night, laughing and rubbing his hands together because of a job well done. Or not so much at the moment. But either way, that, that nonsense idea of people shilling and getting paid to do so, I think is just preposterous. We see it all the time. People who are absolutely adamant that they're on a sphere and will argue as such. And then six months down the line, come and thank you. And say, oh, 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 yeah, I definitely argued for it being a sphere, but now I don't. I'm a flat earther. I realise my reality isn't as I thought. Well, they were perpetuating the lie up until the point that they realised how wrong they were and admitted it to themselves. But does that make them under the cosh of some ruler telling them to perpetuate that nonsense? No, we seem to do it at a societal level. To the point where the people in control have also bought the same bullshit, but they probably don't even know either. So it's just going to be a social thing i when people realize it they realize it it's not going to be the case that some guy at the top is going to have to make that decision and draw a line through the word heliocentricity rather than under it for the next tv broadcast you know if, as a general rule people just understand that we're not on a sphere they'll just understand it and things will just change naturally there'll be no wars there'll be no mass descent into back. chaos hey qe hey qe he's that was the longest mono monologue i've ever heard Oh, man, I've had a whole weekend right. to think of this stuff, right? I know there's no fundies coming here. We've destroyed right. their R value, Anthony. I need to be able to waffle. <laughs> <laughs> He's just having his Arwinian well, moment. 
Oh, sorry. Right. I, I was just saying the fundamental com mentalism comes from, you know, needing a cosmology, you know, no other force is allowed to, you know, be this, you know, world making, you know, cosmology making force. We don't talk about the osmotic force being the basic force of all interactions, you know, that only happens with gravity. We don't talk about, you know, the force of the markets and like capitalism being the, you know, the force that, you know, makes everything. Gravity is the only thing that does that. So really with these people, you're talking about replacing their cosmology, even their religion, with another one. So that's a, a totally different discussion. You know, we're not even talking about a, a scientific force at this point. We're talking about a mythological, cosmological, pseudo-religious one. Yeah, religion, that's the right word. They've got a religion. The fact that it might be self-imposed is my point. Hey Nathan, a Kumo hey. virus in chats. He thinks that spheres don't have an edge. And when I remind him that boats go boats and need an edge to go over on their model, he goes, Well, I'm not quite sure what his answer is, but he, he think he seems to think that spheres don't have edges. Well if spheres don't have edges, then <laughs> what's a sphere if it hasn't got this an is, edge? This is it's quite got amusing. to have an edge from our perspective, otherwise boats can't go over it. What we're seeing It's right? um retreating into ambiguity. What what we're seeing is a delayed response right so cast your mind back about three weeks maybe even more it's probably about six weeks actually middle of january there or thereabouts i'm on camera holding a pink ball with a little yellow cheese showing them how their sphere works now i look back on that laughing because i think about it and go why was i feeling the need to tell them how their sphere edge worked when i've got three straight years of them telling me exactly how it works and asserting that we've got a physical sphere edge. Yeah, I don't need to suddenly argue back at them how they're supposed to argue their model. That's actually the trap they wanted us to fall into. Have us arguing how they should have a sphere edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you say we haven't got a sphere edge because spheres don't have edges, at a fundamental level, you don't understand geometry. That's fine. You know, that's retarded. But it's also something that we came across at the very early stages of this argument. The first gut response... From the fundies at a slightly higher level than a cum virus <laughs> was to go uh we don't have an edge because it's been programmed into them that they don't say the word edge they say the words earth curve instead of edge because edge is a bad word <laughs> so what do we do with this bad word because they've definitely got one well they take that bad word and they plaster it on us in the form of the flat earth society model and its edge with boats going over it how very telling and also very damning now we're exposing that fact that we've been asked about our edge with the boats going over it when we don't reify a model from the flat earth society controlled up narrative but they've definitely got an edge and the morons at ground level here don't even appreciate what the edge would be they've been here arguing about how they've got a blockage from earth curve not realizing that's the leading edge of the sphere blocking the bottom of the boat morons yeah, yeah, that's your edge. You don't have to like the terminology. You prefer it when you're asking us for our edge, don't you? Yeah, they'll have the tables have turned. And the terminology is quite clear, but they're retreating into ambiguity because there's the definition of the edge, which is layman's, which is just a boundary versus the geometric edge, which is mathematical and very specific for this discussion, but useless for the analysis. In geometry, an edge is just the meeting of two planar surfaces in a non-180 degree fashion that's not a straight line anymore. It gives you kind of a, an, a, a bend or a V or whatever. That's the geometric definition of an edge, but that's useless for the sphere that we're talking about. We're talking about a boundary and they know it but they have to retreat into ambiguity and confusion to avoid dealing with you know the fact that we have no measurable boundary edge of a ball amen that's exactly what they're doing yeah that's something that sounds like it could have come from the words of yoda now listen young skywalker simply retreat into ambiguity with a hand wave we do not see the geometric horizon <laughs> 
Yeah, it's true. And they will just war against your mind and try to destroy it if you begin to see the truth. If you begin to see the truth that, hey, the horizon is cur is not curved when it should be at the very least as, you know, prima facie evidence of a ball, they'll just destroy the mind that looks for consistency. They're like, well, the line can be straight or curved, really. It really doesn't matter. You know, um, we can't really prove it anymore. You know, they'll just try to destroy your consistent, you know, truth seeking, you know, mind. Then why do they have the X marking a spot on the orthographic view? Uh, because they needed to block boats when it's being asserted that we do have geometry and that we're standing on a sphere with physical geometry dictating that sphere shape that we're supposed to stand on. It's the tenets of their religion. But at the same time, Tenth Man, we do not have a sphere edge horizon. <laughs> well, they can't measure it, but they're able to put it on their picture. Yeah. You also can't see the physical position of your own head in any image you ever take ever. But they still put that in the geometry too, don't they? Well, they've got to admit now that their model is wrong because it doesn't work out in the real world. We need a new prayer, don't we? We really do. I mean, these people will do anything for their pagan ball. You know, they will war against your mind. They will war against you. They'll try to throw out their credentials to intimidate you. But, you know, some of these people are very smart and very capable, but they really don't know how to think about the problem in a new way. You know, they're still kind of tied to the pagan globe. What makes you say it's pagan? Uh, yes, most ancient cosmologies um, that appear to have been revealed by, you know, some sort of godlike source. Um, appear to be flat with some sort of hemispheric dome covering. Uh, it's the uh, ancient Greek mystery school people that came up with this nonsense, this cabalistic ball. And that's pagan, is it? Yes, pagan if it's not revealed by God. If it's revealed by some uh, demon from hell or man's limited... I mean I've got a suggestion for the opening line of the of the new prayer, Nathan. Oh, cool. Our horizon. Our horizon. horizon. That's excellent. <laughs> yeah. Hang on, hang on. Our horizon. Hang on, yet. That's brilliant. Our horizon, who art in mathematics, hallowed be thy name. And then it can go on from there. That's nice. Anybody out there with a creative mind, start off with that for us and let us know. We'll sing it. Well, I don't like singing it. I'll say it. When oh no! I'll put, I'll, I'll put some Gregorian chant music in, in the background. It'll sound so like religious. It'd be brilliant. It needs to be able to be stated when we have like a moment ago. There was a, a moment of contemplation amongst everybody on the panel and in Discord, and that would have been the moment to read off the Radius Dominus blessing. But obviously, I don't have one anymore. They don't have an R to trust in, so I can't really read off that prayer prayer because they can't trust in R. So where they're at now is pretty clear. They're saying the earth is physical, but it's not mathematical. Yeah, we knew that. No, they're saying it's the other way around. They're saying the earth is mathematical, it's not physical. Yeah, it's the, it is no. the other way around. They're saying we do have a geometric horizon, we don't see it. In other words, the bit we don't see is the reality. That's what they're saying. It's amazing. Some of the quotes that are coming out at the moment are fantastic from the globe head side. Boy, no, what I meant, no, what I meant there, said, Anthony, is that if the Earth is physical, because they got to admit it's physical, and then when we ask them, where's the geometric horizon? Well, now at that point, they lose because that's not mathematical for some reason. Well, what it reduces to is that something physical has to be blocking the bottom of objects beyond. But the thing is, we have precedent for non-physical blockage by, you know, optics, something optical blocking something beyond with like a coin that's much smaller than the car, but optically blocking whole portions of the car in a non-geometric way. You know, the coin looks, you know, to be about the same size, uh, angular size as the car with, you know, optical obstruction right there. But if you shoot like a laser slightly to the side of that coin, it will hit the car. It will not go past the car like it's 
going past the coin, it will hit the car. That's the same thing with the globe. Is it physical? If we shoot a, a laser at this hump, is it going to hit the hump or go straight through it optically? It's going to go through it optically, which means that it's like the train tracks. It appears to rise to eye level, but it's a false impression. It's just optical and apparent, nothing physical at all, or not as well, much as say with the coin in front of the car. Well, then welcome to Flat Earth. That's our argument. Yeah, but he's hinting at them doing that in the basis of their maths, which he and I both know is an impossibility because they're talking about actual sizes. Nothing's apparent in their maths. They're talking about geometry while simultaneously telling us they don't have the geometric necessity of a geometric horizon to do the geometry with. It's a great time to be alive if you're a flat earther. All you got to do is it watch truly Mr. Is. Sensible go back and forth in double speak about what's blocking the bottom of both when Mitchell from Australia asks him. That's pretty much the crowning moment of this double speak. Yeah, it was really segment. Exactly. It was really concise because he, he's got the guy, Mr. Sensible, over a barrel asking him what's blocking the boats. And he declares the geometry of Earth's blocking the boats because he's been pre-wired to say that. And then within the next breath or the next sentence, he's telling him how we don't see it. We'll have to agree to disagree that it is there. We just don't see it. So, yeah, very well done to Mitchell from Australia because he got an unsuspecting fundy moron to just double speak his way around it and look completely stupid in the process. Not only that, he admitted that we have... at best, he says, at best the only thing that you would disprove would be the radius. It's like, hello, that's what we're doing. <laughs> oh, and the other Thank thing you he said talked was... about because the Earth would have to be to have a horizon that's, you know, uh, five miles out, ten miles out. You know, it, it's ah, yeah. just, it, it's yeah, but that, that's, that's the funny thing. What he said was, when he when he said to me, he said, okay, so you've got 39.59 up to 39.60. And I was like, are you kidding me? Can you not scale, dude? When it's 10 times further back, that makes us astronomically bigger. That makes us bigger than the sun. He, he wanted to concede one mile bigger, so it was 39.59 to 39.60. And I was like, you absolute idiot. No, he's just being a weasel. What he's saying is that... Well, the radius of Earth based on an oblate spheroid is slightly variable between 39.59 and 39.63. I could be wrong on those numbers. But there's a very, very small difference between what they claim the radius value could be. Well, that tiny well, difference is what he's conceding by way of being a weasel. Well, if you listen to the argument and you understand the mathematics, as Anthony is just pointing out, the horizon and its physicality is so far beyond the limits of constraint that they've had to concede we don't have a physical horizon, despite the fact they've been arguing for one. You know, it wouldn't be at that point where someone like Rumpus would say, we literally, quote, we don't have a physical geometric horizon. Well, he's only saying that but out of necessity. You know, he's been, like I say, arguing for it for, for years on end, just how geometric and physical it is. That's the basis of your religion if you're a globe, Ed. So there's got to be a reason why he's relinquishing that physical geometry when it's the tenets of his religion. And it's because of the black swan. It's so beyond being, oh, an extra mile of radius, well within the boundaries that were set down anyway. No. Like Anthony says, the second black swan puts the horizon limit beyond the value of the sun. It's so far gone, the geometry and the R value, that it's irretrievably dead. To the point where your own side's having to having to defend not having one now like i say happy days for flat earthers at the moment <laughs> and, and as, as time progresses i understand anthony's exasperation because it's like surely someone wants a piece of this on our own side man <laughs> why wouldn't you want to get behind this and also you got to see if the model actually matches reality or approximates reality. I mean, why would the horizon rise to eye level, you know, in any mathematical model, you know, tangent to a sphere? Mathematically, that implies um, an increase as the line that represents the horizon goes up. Yet, if it is not changing, it should stay static and stable. It shouldn't rise at all. So that's, you know, a, a very subtle, insidious form of reification where you're fitting in this stuff that isn't part of the original math model at all with perspective. There's no way to mathematically model perspective, basically. That's correct. Because the perspective implies lines that change values. There's no math for a line of light that is changing value as it gets away from your eye. There's no math for that. They're fitting that in with an approximate tangent globe model, but the math can't accommodate that. So that's reification on a very large scale. 
Absolutely correct. They use actual sizes, feet and inches or meters for the target so that it doesn't change. And then what is essentially the change in angular size drawn with a straight line in their geometry is called earth curvature. So when something gets too small to see, they claim it's being obscured by earth curve horizons, the physical geometry thereof, which they don't have anymore. But you're absolutely correct. You can't reify their mathematics anymore. It's become untenable to try and attempt to just say, no, we're just dealing with the physicality of the geometry. None of the aspects of perspective are going to be taken into account. We don't need them anymore. To then come along and juxtapose the word apparent with their horizon, which is redundant, and also completely excluded from their maths. They don't have apparent sizes in their maths. As I say, it becomes untenable at the point that they relinquish the geometry. No, we don't have a geometric horizon. Well, then you can't do geometry anymore. And it's very hard to separate, you know, out the model that you like as like a globe proponent versus does the model actually predict this? Like if the horizon was staying at a constant level, why do I have it mathematically increasing up toward eye level when really it should be staying static and not going anywhere? You, you know, see that it's model. hard to separate out what the model yeah. actually models predicts reification from the approximation anyway. that you'd like you're to you're be begging the question reified in the into the model. No, you're correct. You can also see this demonstrated by Rory Cooper. So you're, the bit that you described as being insidious was the part where you've got the drop on a sphere Earth versus the horizon rising. So Rory Cooper, my perspective, actually does model this out. And as soon as you start to raise an altitude, it should start dropping away from you to the point where it's demonstrated in Google Earth. Anthony showed it a few times. At cruising altitude, you should see the physical Earth curve edge because the horizon's physical in their model. But you don't because it isn't but they will then talk your way around it to justify with someone like neil degrasse tyson in a very overt way telling you that you shouldn't see earth curving at cruising altitude well yeah you should if it's a sphere it would be apparent that it's a sphere from the moment you started raising your horizon but which is a physical point as opposed to a vanishing point would drop away from you because it's a physical ball and that's what happens when you raise above a ball to the point where if you're high enough It'll look like the blue marble picture they show you. Well, all because it's a physical edge that would get more and more curved as you raise in altitude from the moment you start raising up. So what do they do? They tell you, no, it shouldn't. Neil deGrasse Tyson. No, no, no. You wouldn't see the Earth curve from the ISS. So they've taken it beyond the point of just not seeing it from cruising altitude. They say you shouldn't see it from the ISS. Well, yeah, you should. You should absolutely see it. You should see it from ground level. It's there in the maths. And that's what we've been saying. You know, math usually deals with static values. One equals one, five equals five, six equals six. You know, what sort of math has a line that's right by you as a six foot observer where, you know, there's like, you know, one degree per foot. And then when you raise an elevation and can see further, now it's one degree per mile. That's way too, you know, inconsistent. It's changing, you know, constantly depending on your, your field of view. What sort of math uh, and, and lines and math change value from reference point to reference point to reference point. Usually you have to pick one and stick with it. And based off of the six foot reference point where you have like a degree per foot or whatever, or like a degree per tenth of a foot, you would have consistent, you know, uh, huge amounts of drop as you go uh, further up with that as a baseline, as a constant baseline, as opposed to the changing baseline where you change it based off of, you know, uh, your elevation or whatever. Just pick one and stick with it. And you see how mathematically inadequate any modeling of it is. You know, at best, this approximates it. But that's reifying the model if you're allowing it to approximate something. We could come up with a flat model that does that, too, and has that amount of wiggle room in it. You know, there's so much wiggle room written in for the ball. It's ridiculous. You know, I wish we had that wiggle room for our models and stuff. We don't have models. You might. Well, the main... Uh, elements for models by model i mean something that we can test to see hey is this you know close to reality flatness um north pole in the center um some sort of firmamental dome covering an antarctic you know ring that is bigger than say the equator and expanding ever outward toward more land model like elements that can be tested did you all miss what kiwi said if the model does not match geometry or reality, then it's a reified statement of that model. It's not real. It's over right there.
any more for any more. No? Yeah, I think it's worth reminding people that Mr. Sensible doesn't realise the magnitude of his error yet. So feel free to go over to his channel and basically laugh at him because he, he doesn't realise that if you get the radius wrong on your model, it's game over. That's kind of we win. Oh, you idiot. And with that, I'm going to say, if you are watching this on the Nathan Oakley Premier Ring stream, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you're watching this live on the Nathan Oakley 1980 channel, this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making this live show possible. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. I've been Nathan Oakley. Stay tuned if you're watching on the Premier Ring stream, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Yeah, I've, I've had a whole weekend to think about the, the waffle, Arwen. Knowing full well, it's just, I don't know, I don't know what's going to break their silence because they've got no response to this. So, got to, got to yeah, fill the no airwaves somehow. Say again? They don't have any physics for it either. Well, it's pure geometry that they've been asserting, been asserting, past tense. I have a 66 Shelby, but you just can't see it. Yeah, I've got a Ferrari in my garage, but nobody's ever seen it. I've got a massive cock. Oh, brother. That's just a lie, Nathan. <laughs> Plenty of people have seen it. <laughs> Huge. Huge. Sorry, I had to lower the tone, didn't I? We're in the after show now. We're not live. We're not live. No, I just ended the show, didn't I? Guys, oh, right. let's not forget that when we're talking about the physical sciences, the physical sciences don't care about the natural world. <laughs> that's Philip. <laughs> Philip Weinberg, PhD physics. Hey, <laughs> Philip Weinberg, man. That's I, I my favorite of all the dumb globe head quotes. Today. That's by far away my favorite. Nathan, I had to apologize on your behalf the other day. Oh, here we go. Did you say to Ellen UK? Nice tits, by the way. Um, I did, but there was context to it. Oh, because she said to me, she said, Tony. And I said, yes. And she went, what the fuck's Nathan doing? I said, what do you mean? And he just said to me, nice tits, Emma. Ah, I, said, I remember now. No, 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 I remember. <laughs> <laughs> So there was somebody else in there. I think it was Fight the Flat Earth. <laughs> and I was waiting for a response to be something along the lines of how dare you or don't talk to me like that. So I could respond, I wasn't talking to you. But she didn't give me the feed line. So all that that's been left with now is me just asserting that she's got nice tits. And I didn't actually direct it in her direction. I just put it nice tits in the chat feed. So she's assumed I mean her. Right? Clearly, because she's told you. Now, because she didn't acknowledge it or give me the reply that I needed to make the joke, which was say, actually, I was talking to somebody else and then name the bloke for the, for the comedic effect. Um, she didn't obviously acknowledge it in the way I needed, so I just left it. But I like the fact that she has assumed I was talking to her. That's quite funny also. So what I'll say is, uh, when I next speak to her, I'll say, Nathan said, go back and look at the context. Somebody else was talking to him at the same time, right? Yeah. Well, no, just no, just you You now get the opportunity because she's given you the feed line. So you can say, he wasn't talking to you. Right. Well, who were you talking to then? That's, that's not relevant. Ugh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll have to go back and look at it. She did send me the screen cap of it. Say, I said, are you sure it was Nathan and not, not Nathan's sock? And she went, no, it was Nathan. And she, she went back and got it and was like, I don't fucking know why he said that. I'll ask him. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a setup for a joke that never happened. Oh. Yeah, I have to apologise, Nathan, because uh, 
Sleeping warrior is oh. taking this upon himself. <laughs> Here we go. Now we get another side to of the be, coin. To be offended <laughs> on my behalf, bless him. I, I, no, I didn't even realise that you were there. I thought he dropped Discord. I'm so glad I've got a I'm screen that I can see everything that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I can take a joke. It's fine. I didn't even know you were here. Normally when he stops recording, we drop Discord. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. No, we don't. I like the nervousness in your voice, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not nervous. I'm just explaining. He's in that, trouble. That... Ah, you're screwed, Danny. Bollocks! I'm not screwed. I'm, I'm, this is not being turned <laughs> against me. No way. Oh, yeah, it Keep is. digging. Oh, it Go ahead, Emma. I think that's no, it. No, think, no, I'm good. I'm I think good. that's it, it actually. For itself. I was going to say that that's the conclusion, right? <laughs> There's nothing more that needs to be said. Hello, Emma. How are you? Hey, chocolate. I'm good. I'm I haven't died tonight. of the woo flu yet. You got to show you tonight, Emma? Possibly. Very likely. Well, if there is, I'll plug it. If I say it verbally now, I'll remember when it plays back later. So if Emma's got a show awesome. on, you'll see the link to Emma's show going past in the after show now. Thank you, Nathan. Hang on a minute. Oh, you said you weren't recording anymore. I haven't said that once. Fucking hell. <laughs> I thought you turned off. Have you been at the mushrooms again? I don't fucking know. Well, you're right, well. <laughs> just, just, I'll just jump into my own hole. Have you been at the mushrooms? <laughs> been a fucking superhuman today. I went and got this, um, a part for the boiler, fitted the boiler, went and got the part for the boiler, fitted it and got the boiler running again and got a part for my compressor and garage and got that working again. Been a massive beast, super massive beast today. And then it started pissing down. So I got all my running round done before it started pissing down and the heating's back on. Woohoo! Happy days. Just in time for spring. Oh, yes. Just in, just in time for the rain. I can't wait for it to turn. I hate winter. I do. As soon as spring turns around. Summertime. Happy days. I was all ready for the show, looking for the thing, looking for the hangout link, and I'm like, oh, damn it. They changed, They just changed the damn times. I got to wait another hour. <laughs> have your, so your, clocks have your clocks have changed? Yeah, spring ahead. All right, so we're not, we're not changing our clocks for at least another three weeks. So that's slightly beneficial then. So the, there's a, a larger American audience because more of them are awake. Same go for you, Arwin. Next three weeks, you'll have a slightly larger American audience during the during your show. When does your your clocks change? Three weeks. Last weekend, in, last Sunday in uh, March. What time you got now there? Uh, three o'clock. All right. So now we've got your attention, QE. I assume you were listening while. I was talking about my ponderance that there is no powers that should not be in regards to the heliocentric deception. It's a ground level, uh, self induced idea reified by oneself, if that makes sense. No, I didn't catch that. Okay. Did you get the did you get the broad strokes from what I just said, or do I need to expand on what I've just said? Please expand. So if you take some of the conspiratorial attitudes of flat earthers they point their fingers at there being a lie that needs to be exposed and the liars who have lied to us now if you ignore the exception of the people who are clearly on high wire on the iss they're definitely lying but if you exclude them and look at people like tony blair or whoever you know trump and you say this person if i sat down with them and had a meal with them and talked about heliocentrism and the flat earth would they be exactly the same as almost every other Joe Bloggs? Just because they're in power, would they actually realise anything to do with this deception? I would postulate the answer is no. And they would just be just like everyone else. They've had the same indoctrination. 
Now that indoctrination is your average Joe filmmaker making stuff and putting it into movies because he's been of the same attitude as everyone else around him for a number of generations. Therefore, you know, before I was a flat earther, if I talked about doing things globally, travelling globally, it's not because I want to indoctrinate next man, it's just part of the lexicon that I use. So it doesn't mean that I'm out overtly trying to deceive or propagate the lie. And that's true for, I would say, 99.9% .9 of people. Yes, there are a very, very small number that do definitely lie, and you can prove it. But beyond that, is it just the case that we've all got this idea of being on a spinning ball because we've just told ourselves it and then perpetuated it out to others? Therefore, it's a, a self-perpetuating lie. It's not necessarily got a any any Medusa head that needs chopping off to, to stop the lie. It's just a, 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 at a grassroots level, people just need to appreciate that they're not on a spinning ball and stop kidding themselves that they're on a spinning ball and telling others that they're on a spinning ball because they've kidded themselves, if that makes sense. I'd agree on a speculation basis. Uh, you can't know for sure, but I'd agree with that. Stops people looking for the boogeyman, though. If you can wire people to just, at the very least, conceptualise it. If there was a boogeyman who was perpetuating it, I think that would... It would be forced to manifest, wouldn't it? People who are trying to perpetuate lies tend to make mistakes. Yes. There's, there's, there's always... How would you say a monkey in the wrench somewhere along there? Because it's a lie. So you just got to find it. Yeah, I just don't think there's this whole many heads of the Hydra or whatever that you've got to find to to figure out who the boogeyman is to get to the to the bottom of why we've been lied to about being on a spinning sphere. I just think that whole nah, there's notion... Only a few. There's yeah, only I've... a few and you're not going to get to them. But they're going to get theirs in the end. I'll it, guarantee it. it. In the end, before the Almighty. But in terms of us doing something about that, that's not within our remit. And like no. you just said, we're never going to get to those people, the ones that have profited from the lie and perpetuated it more on, under the understanding of it, the, the ones that are potentially metaphorically rubbing their hands together. You're never going to get to them. They're never going to be punished by us. So don't worry about it. Exactly. It just I've, I've, the thing that triggered this was actually an orthodox. That fifty goes by now, and he was saying he was worried about the masons coming around. Aren't you worried? He's projecting. Aren't you worried about the masons coming and chopping your head off because you're, you know, exposing their lie? So from that, I gleam in his mind the masons have lied about the globe. He doesn't want to face that fact, so he's going to project it onto me while he simultaneously denies the lie, and thinks that I'm perpetuating something that's, in his mind. It was very convoluted. I'm, I can't even wrap my head around it now, but I know he was projecting his fear of having somebody come after him for exposing a lie. Now, he's detached himself from, from my saying, well, no, but that's a fictitious circumstance because there is no lie to expose. You're all deluded. That was his justification. There you go. That's all summarised now. But it says, well, so if you were to actually re face the horrific reality that you see as the, the world being flat... Suddenly, you'd be concerned about the Masons coming after you if you talked about it on YouTube. It's like, well, why? Well, I'm not. I don't know about anybody else here. I can only speak for myself. I'm not in the slightest bit concerned that someone's going to come after me for this. Nah, me either. Uh, Masons gonna Mason. At higher levels, you find out that they worship Satan. So the Masons at NASA gotta direct a uh, worship away from him toward a uh, pagan space gods. They're going to do what they got to do. Exactly. Normalising it by wanting the rest of the world to do it. Well, yeah, they might have something, something to answer for if we could ever get to them, but pff, I'm not going to waste my life concerning myself with that. You know, my life is richer for knowing I'm not on a spinning ball and ever more wondrous for not knowing some of the bullshit answers that we've been given by those particular people if they're the ones who are the ones to blame for us perpetuating this lie. And you've only got to listen to a general conversation amongst a couple of members of the public. Their language is such that they perpetuate it themselves. Just communication main, standards. Go on. Go on. I was saying the, the main thing with the um, 
flat earth um, uh, infiltration attempts by government paid trolls appear to be number one directed away from belief in a creator um, and or a Christian one because uh, some people are coming to um, belief in creation with a flat earth cosmology since it's obviously created. Um, number two, you know, take it down some sort of rabbit hole like UFOs or some sort of nonsense that gets it, you know, unfocused. And, you know, number barring that, number three, you know, docs embarrass, discredit and, um, you know, frustrate its members, you know, with just, you know, endless gobbledygook. And, yeah, know, but that's another stuff. incoherent faction, because even the pseudoscientists know that there was creation. So they're not even parroting the right pseudoscience. <laughs> it, it's a convoluted, tangled web of nonsensical buffoonery. <laughs> yeah. Like you say, you know, it's it's not scientific. You know, no variables were manipulated. They just set up a philosophical cosmology where gravity has to be this force that's part of your calculations. It has to be. It's like a weight, like a ball and chain that chains your thinking. You can't even think outside of the gravity terms anymore. Some of it's yeah. getting ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. You guys heard my breakfast order? No. <laughs> oh, just like, yeah, that's all I heard. <laughs> Over medium bacon, toast, chocolate, ice cold, chocolate milk, ice cold. Yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, no. Only word I heard was, was yeah, I don't know about anybody else. That's like one word. That's it. But, um. You know, that's where you got to deal with the religious cosmology side. You know, the will of these, you know, um, secret society, Greek mystery school scientists to make an alternative cosmology to the Bible and to try to justify walking away from it with this, you know, cosmological nonsense. You know, if anything is a universal force, it's probably electric. You know, if anything. Yeah, not no, back to the creator, like I said, pseudoscience, it, they're not parroting. The, that's what we've been trying to get them to parrot for the longest time. We, we're trying to get them to parrot the correct pseudoscience. We're trying to get them to, you know, to get down there with Einstein and parrot that. And it's like trying to friggin' pull teeth. Then we get other flat earthers saying that we're Einsteinian believers because we're trying to get the crayon munchers to parrot the right pseudoscience. It's all a convoluted mess by Dunning Kruger pretender clowns on yeah, every gotta, side. We've got to watch that ourselves, though. So the same thing applies at the moment. Like me, I gave the example earlier laughing about it, but it is quite serious. So me holding up a ball describing how a physical geometric earth curve edge would work is to essentially reify it on their behalf just because they're denying it now. It's like, well... The same applies with Einstein. We have to go into great detail about how Einsteinian mechanics works and pseudo ramonian force space because they don't parrot the right pseudoscience, as you phrase it. But ultimately speaking, that's still the words of Einstein from our lips, right? Now, don't get me wrong, it doesn't help that you should really appreciate the actual position we're taking and listen to the entire sentence, perhaps, when we explain that you, the Globehead, Johnny Globehead, arguing that gravity is a force doesn't understand that your globehead religion rhetoric is Einsteinian and as follows. That's not me taking the Einsteinian position. It's explained to a fundamentalist zealot that doesn't understand his own religion that he should be parroting his religion because I want to destroy the correct religion, <laughs> not the old one that's 100 years old. It doesn't that's mean right. we believe in Einstein. That's right. The worst part is that we got to teach them their model in order to destroy their model correctly. Yes. No, the worst part the worst part is explaining to other flat earthers that yeah i remember <laughs> when i first met you qe you expressed your own pain because you were i'm not being overly complimentary when i say this a cut above all the other flat earthers in terms of your understanding of the subject matter and it's frustrating because you in some instances trying to explain to somebody who's got a a crappy argument why their argument's crappy and they're bracing against you even though they're on your own size and it's frustrating. Well, now we're in a similar position. Like you when you first debated Rumpus, you had to educate him on what his pseudoscience actually was so that you could challenge it. It's like a ninja with a with a layman, and you, you're going, no, no, hold the sword like this so I can at least have some sport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got it. Yeah. 
You're exactly right. That is so funny. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, dealing with some floppy sack of potatoes when you you know you want you want another ninja to spar with so you can actually up your skill level. Instead of that, you you're spending half your time educating them on what their actual gravity is because they're telling you it's a bloody force, hundred years out of date. And you're like, look, I want to pull apart pseudo Romanian force space for the bullshit just so story and reification of a conceptual medium that it is. And I can't do that if you're talking about hundred year out of date forces that don't exist anymore. So let's just get you on the right track. So once you can say just two or three words that accept that you go, okay, so gravity is the bending of a conceptual medium, right? Then I can chop your head off. <laughs> <laughs> it's in fact, it's, it's much worse than that. Just yesterday, a couple seasoned flat earthers in an argument about the rotation of the earth and speed, they still didn't get it. I, I was beside myself. I was literally shaking my head. I mean, it, this is before 2015. Angular velocity versus tangential speed. You don't measure speed in RPMs, flat earthers. My word. You got to up your game. You don't even have a game. What are you doing out here? Right? Go back to picking up cans alongside of the road. If you can't get that argument, okay, thanks. I mean, we get, all we can do is up our game and up our exposure. You know, I bang on all the time about people sharing the shows, and to be fair to my uh, other channel, 1980, it is growing reasonably well. But in the big scheme of other channels in this subject matter, I'm still definitely one of the smallest, and it kind of frustrates me to a certain extent because you think, no, no, this should be the prevalent information out there. I'm not saying that through arrogance. I'm saying it because it's a fact. We have the best information there is on this subject matter. There is no argument in regards to heliocentricity that can't be undone, and it gets undone, and has been undone here. So therefore, when we have to brace ourselves against, if you like, the more popular flat earthers, and they're covering, covering conspiratorial subjects, and essentially making up stories, it just frustrates me. I don't want to challenge them on it, because that's not my bag on YouTube. You know, it never has been, and I don't want it to become my bag. By the same token, I would prefer that people listen to our information. Like anybody on YouTube, even if you're wrong, you still want people to be listening to your nonsense. Well, we're not peddling nonsense. We're peddling arguments that have not been debunked. So, you know, it's, it's what's the word? It stands the test of time or the, the quality of the evidence and arguments that we have here are, you know, they're self-evident. They're, they're demonstrating themselves to be of the highest quality. It's not just me saying it. We need to get the word out, man. We need to get everyone getting this word out. And starting tomorrow, I got a little technique to employ to do that. So stay tuned. It's certainly something I've been racking my brains around watching various videographers. The only problem in terms of watching other people trying to give advice on how to expand out information or grow your channel to a greater audience is... The dead end you reach in terms of the algorithmic element of it that we have no control over in this subject matter anymore, which is heartbreaking, because you can, in many instances, I already do, employ a lot of the things they advise. And all I see in my statistical data is this has appealed to more of your subscriber base, because that's the videos, that's its, that's its viewership, that's all it reaches. If you're subscribed, you'll get the information. If you're not subscribed, you won't. Unless it's been recommended to you. Again, I bark on about this mainly when I'm in the chat as opposed to on the live shows because I think it would get tedious rather than the information being about the subject matter it being about me barking on all through the live show about please share the show, make sure you're sharing it. Have you shared it on YouTube? Have you shared it on Twitter? That's boring in the live show. But in these, you know, in this particular circumstance, I'm more than happy to discuss because it's a subject matter as opposed to me actually pleading on air to get people to share. I can do that in the live chat. But people hey, should Nathan. share. Go ahead, go on, sorry. Yeah, uh, let's not overlook the gains. Uh, you have Mark Sargent on UK TV. You got Eddie Bravo. You've got Mitchell from Australia. You've got Harry from down under and a host of others that have jumped and are pushing this. And so we are making headway. We just, 
have to realize the playing field is not fair. And whatever gain we have is going to be because we stick to proving things. And it's going to take a little while for everybody else to catch up. But that's the normal time frame when people are going to be in advance scared to talk about the subject of flat earth to begin with, even if they are well armed. Yeah, but the thing is, the, the other way to view it is the people that are not pushing it, we don't have to name any names, but maybe we should challenge them and say, hey, why aren't you pushing this? Are we missing something here? Do you think that it's wrong? Why are you not pushing this? This is like one of the strongest arguments we've had for ages. We need the support. We need everyone pushing it, but you're deliberately not for whatever reason. Can you tell us why? I'll tell you why. Well, if it's just personal, fine. Because, because Anthony, that... you remember I said at the beginning that we're going to have, and of course it wasn't just me picking up on this. Nathan even said it and said it today. We're going to see the ballers not come on the show. And then I recommended perhaps we can interview other Flat Earth Channel producers uh, and that's how we get it out by bringing them on the show, going over the argument, and now they're ready, to, armed, ready to go. Sorry, Nathan. Go on. I was just going to say by by confronting the people on our own side and saying why aren't you bending to our will and our arguments, that is very arrogant. It's like you want it by the same. Obviously, you want to promote it, but promoting isn't the same as asking why somebody isn't already acknowledging your argument. Okay, but maybe it's because there's a flaw that we've not seen and they're being polite and they're not telling us and maybe nah. for in our own interests. Yeah, just right. not telling nah, in case we there isn't. Each other. You there know isn't. that's bullshit. Right? Yeah, that's Come bullshit. On. There isn't. <laughs> I know you're, you're just trying to leave the door open for the, the possibility that they may see a flaw and they might express that to you when you're, you know, promoting the argument. But as for challenging others for why they're not promoting it, it's like, well, that's, that's our job. Well, the main thing is getting people's minds to work. Um, um, trying to get people's minds to work consistently and, and truthfully again. If there is a curved ball, why isn't the horizon curved? Why aren't lasers hitting it? You know, why is NASA full of crap? Why do lenses add curvature? You know, um, why do Globers have such a bad understanding of perspective? You know, it's little things like this, you know, where we need to point out the inconsistencies in the thinking and correct the inconsistent, you know, uh, thinking. Because, where they're because it's a, because it's a Jedi mind ball. trick and it was never real. There was never a geometric horizon that was ever measured in the first place. That's what's happening. But back to Anthony. Anthony, the arguments that we're putting on, look what's happening with Mr. Sensible and uh, Rumpus. You know, now he's contemplating we're living in the Matrix. He's changing his looming story. I mean, everything has changed because of the modus tollens with the analogy of the black swan. And I think that was the move that made everything happen. So people will catch up because you can't... Uh, you can't deny the logical consistency argument. Yeah. Well, they've displayed that you can deny it, saying things like your geometric horizon is a straw man, but then again, it's like, okay, well, thanks to, thanks for that, and welcome to Flat Earth. <laughs> well, if they, good as it gets it, right there. if they deny it, the Earth's radius goes over 260,000 miles. Oh, they don't, apparently don't care because they say things like, at best, what you've done here is disprove the radius. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's shocking that they don't get the train wreck. It, it's scary shocking. Impressive also <laughs> how cognitively brainwashed they are to literally not see the car crash. It reminds me of a Penn and Teller magic trick, and I've described this once before. So what they do is they, they're on stage, and they've got this double mirror hanging in the middle of the stage, and in between the double mirror, they're standing on the pole. So the audience cannot see them. They can just see what looks like, a, like a, a frame that you can see straight through. That's what it looks like. And what they say is, your mind can't process things that aren't wired into your brain to process 
If it doesn't make sense to your brain, you won't process it. And he says, I'll show you. He puts his arm, his entire arm, outside the frame of the the mirrors. So the arm, he's waving at the audience. Just his arm. And no one sees it. And he pulls his arm back in and says, because it's a disembodied arm where there's not supposed to be one, nobody sees it. Even if I wave it and move it around, no one's going to see the arm because you're not programmed and wired to expect to see a disembodied arm in the middle of a stage floating. So no one sees it. Well, for the globe heads, this is the metaphorical equivalent of that. This does not make sense for their model. The crash, the car crash analogy, is the, is the black swan. And they see it, but it doesn't process. It's not supposed to work that way in their model, so they just don't see it. It's a disembodied arm to them. Yeah, some, would, some would say that's a reach. That's a what? A reach. <laughs> <laughs> the red flag is when the theory makes your mind work in inconsistent ways. Um, if we're feeling 20 miles per hour in a car, we should be feeling it in space. And then they say something about, you know, a constant velocity, but a spinning, you know, velocity is inherently unstable. It has to change constantly to maintain position around a central axis. And the um, amount of force needed to process a little merry-go-round uh, once per 24 hours is much different than the increasing amounts of force you need for a huge ball. So they're not being consistent with the amount of force needed to make the huge earth ball spin once every 24 hours. What spin? There's no motion. There's no rotation. I'm not moving. Back to the false model that they set up to explain our reality versus using reality and doing a model based on reality. They, they did it the other way around, and everyone's under that spell until they wake up. Well, something is spinning. Um, there needs to be a counter model to account for the spinning effects that we do see with storms that appear to circle the drain. Like if you look at a storm coming from the top down, it looks like, you know, we're talking about Earth, the not air or the stars or the sun and move, which have their circuits. We're talking about Earth, terra firma. Is the Earth spinning under you? No. The Earth, Thank no. You. The space above the Earth, yes. With the I wasn't talking about the stars. So I'm talking about the Earth. The earth is not moving. It's on pillars and stationary. I go with the Hebrew cosmology. The earth is not moving. The space above the earth is. And with that, I'm going to say another huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making this after show possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of you in the Nathan Oakley premiering stream audience for tuning in, hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Once again, be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!